I will call the meeting to order. Uh, 5.34 p.m. on 22nd of June. Meeting call to order. Uh, first order of business would, is to discuss the expansion ice cream, uh, ice cream truck permits. And want to give us a, a sense of what this is about? Uh, sure. Thank you. I'm just texting Mary because she couldn't get on. I'm just going to tell her don't worry about it because she's not really a huge part of this anyway. Um, all right. So what the story is, um, the Board of Health permits food trucks and ice cream trucks, right? And, and we permit them so that they can just about go anywhere. They can go to farmer's market. They can go to parties, school events, whatever, right? So we give them their food permit. Then the ice cream trucks get a second permit. And then this one they get from um, the Board of Selectmen. It's actually a transient license. And this allows them to go to Sandy Beach. So we don't really have any say really who's going to Sandy Beach and who doesn't under normal circumstances. But this year being the year of COVID-19, it came up whether or not the Board of Health wanted to consider banning the trucks from the beach this year, maybe because people can't socially distance. So I asked around a little bit. This really came up because the town of Hall is banning them from Nantasket Beach, but Situate is allowing them and Hingham is allowing them. So, you know, somebody asked me and I'm like, it's really not my opinion. It's, it's really up to the Board of Health. So it's kind of up to you guys to decide whether or not you want to recommend to the Board of Selectmen to not have trucks there this summer because of health reasons. And then they'll make the final vote. So this is, there, is what, sorry, go ahead, Mike. Well, so what is it that, that the, um, that the town of Situate is doing to make everyone feel better that it's okay, a good idea. Do they, they have some kind of a, like some kind of a, um, you know, guidelines that they expect the, the vendor to do, like, you know, put out spacing lines or something like that out. How does that, do you know how they do it? I don't know how they're, they're doing it. I know I permitted the Dell's lemonade truck from Cohasset and she and I talked about them. She is going to space it out so that kids are supposed to like stand on marks um, to keep their distance. And when I spoke with it um, or I emailed with a health agent from Hingham, she was saying that we gave them their permit, but told them like, if they can't maintain social distancing, we're going to pull it. Um, so that's, that's all I know. And then the, the idea would, when, when they say we will pull it, that's mm -hmm. the board of health. That was with the board of health. Yeah. Hmm. So how so do they go ahead? Sorry. I was just saying, how is it different than the snack shack? Is it because the snack shack at Sandy beach has like a set place and they're able to like set the markers? Um, Robin, can you speak to that more? Do you know if, if they've got like, um, they do like have markers. Lines. They do. They do, they do it at oh, okay. Sandy beach. Cause I was there this weekend. At the snack bar, um, Markers are set up, six foot markers, and people are able to uh, at least maintain distancing. Um, they do have some kind of shielding up in front of the uh, uh, in front of the window, but people don't lean in. Um, I guess the big issue with the trucks is, and observing them over the years, is that when a truck comes and ring their bells, uh, the mad dash, and mostly children, and they're not doing social distance at all. I mean, they just basically um, hoard around the truck. That, and there's also the trash issue. They, uh, the trucks don't have an area where they can really uh, deposit trash. So the trash seems to uh, accumulate in the parking lot. Um, at the snack bar, we do have obviously trash barrels there, so we are able to um, contain con contain the trash as well as uh, allow for distancing. Um, and for the most part, there are children that go to the snack bar, but it's mostly adults 
and his children under some supervision. So I think we can maintain the distancing a little better situation at the snack bar. Uh, Robin, I'm sorry, what does the trash have to do with this, the COVID problem? Like, is that? No, that's just an ancillary problem. Oh, okay. Um, got it. So I would, I, I would be in favor of just, um, I, I kind of, I kind of feel like we can manage this in the same way as we could with any other walk up counter. I'm just, yeah. but, and, and basically apply the same rules to the, the ice cream truck, the way we would for any restaurants. If you, I mean, if, if you like, if you went to the snack shack and saw that everyone was crowded in and hanging in the window, I think you would probably, sh we could probably, we would probably warn them or shut it down. So I would probably say we would do the same for this. So. Right. I wouldn't want to just presume they couldn't make it work. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I mean, they are local businesses. Yep. Actually, so they're, they're not, uh, I might be incorrect, but I don't think they're all local businesses, the trucks. One comes from Everett or someplace on the North Shore. I know that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're on mute. I was just going to say, Robin, it's really hard to hear you. Could you, any way you could speak up a little louder, kind of belt it out into the phone? Is this better? Much yes. better. Okay, sorry. Um, I believe uh, at least one of the ice cream trucks is from, um, was not local for sure. Is yeah, so there's there's Dell's Lemonade that, that is Cohasset. There's Nona's, which is Hingham and Situate. Hingham. And then uh, there is a guy that's out of, I think he's out of Everett. So small business, you know. Like, yeah. So um, so what do we need to do then? Do we need to just make a make a motion and a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen? Or that's, the, that's what we have to do? Yeah, that's all it would be. So, it's just a recommendation from from the Board of Health. Robin, can I ask you one more question? When they, because um, I've seen them there, but I've never paid too much attention, do they always park in the same spot, or is it just wherever is available? Roughly the same area. Right. Not, not necessarily the same spot, but um, pretty much uh, a little bit north of the bathhouse. Right. Somewhere in that area. I was just wondering if, if, but I guess it depends on where the parking is open, right? Like, because I do think it's harder to socially distance if you're like on the first row where there's the wall and the sand. Well, that's where they do, but they do park right. between the first and second row, basically, in that. Right. Um, basically, they, they block the, the whole, that whole uh, uh, entryway. So right. That's why I was different. like, maybe if they could like park at the end of the parking lot or something. I mean, just as a recommendation, because I'm fully for trying it because I feel like you can't just punish them because you don't know if it's going to work. Right. What about the um, the end, the north end of the parking lot where there's the um, where, where the gates always closed, but there's that little circle like if they could mm -hmm. pull in there, that would basically limit. Basically, the, the customers would have to go sort of out that gate but it would be a restrict it would restrict it basically so people couldn't come from all directions and sort of right. come around the it might be easier to actually have them you know line up or you know and space things out it's just a i mean it's just a thought and then it won't matter whether you know whether the parking lot is full or not and they, they will always be in the same place and it might be easier for them to have a systematic way of maintaining distance right I don't know if there are any issues with blocking that gate or not, but. Well, there, uh, it, is, it is supposed to be the emergency access area, so. Mm. Um, yeah, the police and fire it, might not let them do that. I would think, I would say that most of the clientele for the ice cream trucks are down there at the South End. Uh, yeah. They're down, you know, near the, near the bathhouse. That's where the parents usually take these children so they can have access to the restrooms and whatever. Uh, the north end, uh, it, I don't think that I don't think the trucks will get much business, frankly. Uh, 
getting down to the whole north end. It's, it'd be a long, it's a, it's a long haul for little kids. Mm. Probably wouldn't do it. And that's just my guess. Well, I'm all for giving it a shot. So. Me too. Um, so okay. should we then make a motion for this? Do we need to actually motion, go through this? Um, you should make it somehow fairly specific about what, what giving it a shot is. <laughs> yes. Uh, what, what kind of um, guidelines are you going to give the trucks? What, what, what would they have to do or not do, et cetera, et cetera? I would do what, would you say, Hingham said they were doing it, but they reserve the right to revoke it if they can't maintain social distancing? Yeah, that's pretty much what they said. Which is kind of what we do for any restaurant, right? So, mm -hmm. but but yes, yeah, say okay. So let's um, let's see. This is going to be a haphazard motion, so let's give it a try. Hang on one second. Let me just think for a minute. So, really, the purpose of this is to give a recommendation to the board and selectmen. So, would the motion be? And I'm just throwing throwing this to out recommend there. to the. I yeah. make a motion to recommend to the board of selectmen. Right. Blah blah blah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, like you say. Um, I, so yes, so I move that the Board of Health makes the recommendations to the Board of Selectmen to allow the permitting of ice cream trucks, transient ice cream trucks, is that redundant, um, to Sandy Beach. Do they go anywhere else in town? I don't think they do really, right? That's really all this is about. They do go elsewhere, but I'm not sure if they will be doing it this year. Uh, they usually go up to the ball fields, Little League field. Uh, Millican Field. That, that, that's they usually kind of move around. Okay, so, so do we not just then give them the, the town wide? Okay, Recom make the make the recommendation that for a town wide okay, provided that the appropriate hygiene, social distancing um, requirements, as recommended by the town, are met. Actually, I um, would say by the state are met. Okay. Even better, by the state. I'll second like, that. Yes. We reviewed, uh, how do we, uh, uh, just to focus in on that, how do we review that? Uh, it's kind of wide open at this point. How do we decide whether they Well, I'm, I'm the, way, the, re that or not. the way I was, the way I was thinking about it was basically by invoking whatever the state guidelines are, then if they don't meet the state guidelines, they're just like any other, any other food service, right? We could basically, you know, give them warnings and shut them down if we had to. Right. So we, what we've been told under the COVID guidelines is that we don't have to go and inspect to make sure that people are following the COVID guidelines, but we have to go um, and inspect when, once we get a complaint. So that's really what I've been going to stores and stuff is when I receive a complaint from somebody and then you're right. Yeah. Then there's a whole series of, uh, um, you know, escalating, you know, steps that you take if somebody's oh. not following the guidelines. So I would just, you know, per common, per, per the standard practice. Yeah. Okay. You have a second. You got that. Yep. Then you second that. Yes. I second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. So tomorrow night is the selectmen's meeting and I've been going like every Tuesday night to kind of give an update of what's happening in, in the terms of health and stuff. So I'll bring it up then and, and let them know that the Board of Health recommends that they proceed with their transient license to ice cream trucks. Great. Great. Do, um, cool, okay. That's pretty much all we have. I think Amy's got some. Stuff. We need to do the minutes from last meeting and such. Speaking of the last meeting, yeah. being Pam, didn't uh, what happened to the pool at Cohasset? Were they oh, yeah. able to find lifeguards, or did they? Do we give them the exception? It was kind of half and half. Um, they they weren't able to find enough. They found. Um, like one full time and one part time. And honestly, I'm not even sure how many they were supposed to have, but I don't think that was quite enough. Mm -hmm. But what they are going to have and what's allowed under COVID is that they're going to have a monitor there full time 
who is okay. not actually a lifeguard, but they're going to keep an eye on things and make sure that th there aren't too many people there. They're going to limit the number of people that are um, on the pool deck, that type of thing. So they should have two sets of eyes. They should have a lifeguard and they should have a monitor. So the waiver stands then? So the waiver does stand because I don't think they could achieve 100% of what they're <clears throat> supposed to coverage wise. Got it. Okay. That's fine. All right. So, um, and by the way, Mary's on the phone. To, um, think about approving the minutes from last meeting. Yeah, they look uh, good to me. Yeah. Motion. I move to accept those minutes. I'll second it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries 3 0. Uh, new meeting, next meeting date. Isn't it funny how with COVID, like the biggest public health emergency in however long, we end up with the shortest Board of Health meetings in right. the two years I've been on the board? <laughs> anyway, I'll just keep... It's true. There's really like nothing else besides what's going on and it's almost like a day-to-day -day thing. So hey, I have what, a vacation what, what in the middle looking, of... Um, for another, uh, next meeting, Pam. When are you going on vacation, Pam? Uh, July, let me see, like 15th, and I'll be back the 27th. So do you want to shoot for the following, the week of the 27th? I think sure. the week of the 27th would be probably reasonable. So, like, so we should go back to a Tuesday, the 28th? Um, I don't know. I don't see these. Selectman meetings ending anytime soon. Oh, oh right. <laughs> so I forgot maybe about that. Wednesday right. or Thursday. Um, I would prefer if the if those are the options, I would prefer um, Wednesday. Me too. That's, okay. So we do five thirty on Wednesday the twenty ninth again. I can make it work. How about you, Robin? Sign Wednesday, July twenty ninth at five thirty. Sweet. Okay, that sounds good. That, that should work. Yes, okay. Pencil that in here. 5.30, the 29th. Okay, excellent. And, uh, Pam, do you have a report for us or do we, since we do get those weekly reports, probably might just want to just go over a couple of highlights. But other than that, I think we, we know exactly what you're doing or not doing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That I'm pretty much just giving you guys the weekly updates. So um, the, the big highlight is today is the next, uh, began phase two, step two, which means more businesses opened up. So, um, the massage businesses open up, the nails, um, personal trainers. So almost at this point, the only thing that's really closed are the gyms. Like the gyms can now open it up and have their personal trainers go in. So South Shore Athletic Club, for example, which is really big, they're going to have four trainers and, you know, four clients at a time in there. And then there's a couple of other places and they're, they're just going to have one trainer and one client at a time. And then how other the than that, almost everything's open. Pam, how yeah. about the indoor tennis courts? Are they still closed? You know, funny you should ask me that, Lynn, because as I was going through my list today, one of the things is the Cohasset Tennis Club. And I haven't talked to that guy, Bud Schultz, since all this started when well, he argued with me that he was not a gym. So I don't know. I'm assuming he probably did, but I'm so not even sure if he's supposed to. They, uh, that's right. Okay. I, they're closed. They're closed for the summer. They always, oh, they, close in, they always close in the summer. And so I was surprised. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So Cause they, I saw that in my spreadsheet today and I thought, yes, uh -oh, they're always I don't know. Closed Memorial day to labor day. That's right. And oh, situates at the tennis courts okay. are actually in situate, right? Correct. So, but, the, but that's considered part of the gym because the situate pool opened for the team, right? Exactly. And they're allowed to do that. That's the only thing that I permit is their pool. 
Yeah. Because the pool yeah, yeah. lies on Quasa property and it did open up for youth sports, youth swimming right. teams and stuff. But they, but that not for the general use. So indoor pools are not open except for, so except for youth sports, mm -hmm. but tennis isn't open for youth sports. Um, I they did, I have to yeah. double check. No, that's okay. It's not a big deal. Cause I, I haven't heard anything from Cohasset. Um, but usually in the summer they have um, instructors that will give lessons, but not part of the club membership. But I haven't heard any of that, so. Okay. Well, good. Thank you for filling in one of my blanks. <laughs> I appreciate oh, that. I can save you a phone call. It's great. Right. Um, yeah, so that's really the big thing. It's just been communicating with the different businesses and, you know, giving them their guidance and um, receiving a lot of plans from people. Like today, I spent a lot of time working on the South Shore Community Center because they have a lot of um, – they have a lot of, I guess, got allow Mary to talk here. They um, they have gymnastics, they have karate, and then they're eventually going to have um, daycare in the fall. So their guidance is the most detailed, as you can imagine, for day daycare. I mean, most of the guidance for the other businesses are like two pages. There's like a whole booklet of 32 pages. So I spent a, a few hours today kind of reviewing it and adding comments and stuff. Um, you know, so I've been getting a lot of plans from classic yacht club, the sailing, well, the sailing club, unfortunately I had to tell them, no, they can't do it. That, that's one of the things that's closed down to phase three. A lot of the, um, anything with competitions in it that has to do with recreational sports at this point, they're still in, um, like drill mode only. It works out well for baseball, actually, you know, because they're nice and naturally spread out and stuff and they can do a lot of drills, but like lacrosse, they're like, we're, we're going to be so bored so fast. What's the point of even playing <laughs> anything? Um, so, I, yeah. I understand the Yacht Club is going to start their summer junior program. Is that correct? Yes, and they, and they can because they – they either have one kid in a boat or their boats are so large that yeah. they can have kids spread out at four corners and, and okay. maintain six feet. I think it's the small boats. I think they have the small ones. Okay. But like the sailing clubs, the boats are too small. They can't right. have more right. than one person right. on there. So anyway, that's what I've been doing. A lot of plans, a lot of going through guidance with people, all that kind of stuff. Answering a question about masks. <laughs> oh. Good stuff. Okay. Um, in terms of my report, the only thing I have to report is I did go to town meeting. And of course, we had the name change for the uh, board. And as I got up to speak, I was, the moderator said that the motion, has, the uh, that Warren article has been withdrawn temporarily due to technical reasons. And I have no idea what that means, and I have not been able to get anything out of Chris Sr. about exactly what that means. So, so we're kind of back uh, treading water, so to speak, which is too bad. Uh, it was a perfect time to uh, make the case in the midst of this COVID piece. But, uh, and there, there was really no opposition. Everybody, you know, all the boards and every uh, committees were all for it. So I, I don't know why it was withdrawn. And I can't seem to get the reasoning. Well, Robin, Mary and I talked to um, Carol St. Pierre, the clerk the next day, and she was saying it was because the lawyer, for whatever reason, just spoke up at the last minute and said, Oh, by the way, if you make this change, it would cascade all through these um, different bylaws like zoning bylaws and stuff and so they he had to go and look a lot deeper to see what consequences there would be if you actually made the change and you know why the guy was sitting on it all this time i don't know but that's that's what we heard so, um, I, I, didn't, I didn't quite hear the whole thing so somebody has to go through all the bylaws and make sure that everything is in order yeah the town council does okay mary do did you hear anything different so um, I basically I heard that um, because it has to go through the zoning bylaws, it requires a public hearing, I guess. Um, 
before it can be put on the warrant. And um, I think it was town council that kind of dropped the ball on it and didn't, didn't bring it up until that day. So um, that, that's what I, that was my understanding from what Carol had to say. So we'll just follow through as it goes along. We'll see, we'll see what happens. I'm disappointed, frankly. I think it was a good opportunity, but. Uh... It's to me like we'll probably just cover it the next town meeting. It's, I mean, I get, you know, I, I'm, it probably has to do with, I mean, just, it sounds like it's just a cleaning up language issue, right? So I think it'll, I think it'll happen. It's just a matter of next town meeting. Robin, yeah, it's too it bad sound, about... it, just sounded, it sounded like just basically a technicality that was overlooked or something. Um, it has something to do with it has to be posted in a, a public hearing prior to town meeting. Well, oh, really? Yeah, that because of because it's mentioned in the zoning bylaws in many different places. I don't really understand, to be honest with you, but that was what I, I took from Carol, that it requires a public hearing, um, like just a public notice. I guess it has to be posted somewhere. And yeah, I don't know all the details. Even beyond the Board of Health meeting when we talked about it? You know what I mean? Uh, I, I would have guessed that yeah, that would apparently. Yeah. yeah. And Robin Christine, you told us the next day he was going to talk to you. That's disappointing that he didn't. Right, Mary? Didn't he mention that in our, our meeting the next Chris, morning? Chris Sr. said that he was actually going to email all the members of the board to explain what happened. So that's very disappointing. Okay. Well, we'll just have to go approach it however they wish, unfortunately. Okay. Oh, Mary, hello. I, I didn't, didn't know you were on. I'm sorry. I apologize. Hello, Mary. That's okay. Yeah, I'm here. So, um, yeah, you get my weekly report every Friday. Right, exactly. Thank you. Um, so, total confirmed cases were up to 25, of which 23 have recovered. One is lost to follow up. Um, that particular case was sent to the CTC, the Contract Tracing Collaborative. Right. Um, and they were not able to follow through with her. They touched base with her initially, but then she would not take their calls after that. Interesting. Um, and then another case was actually a confirmed case from March and it was a student in Connecticut. So Connecticut just sent the report to me last week. So that's what's up with those cases. And then the probable cases were up to 19. Um, probable cases are cases that are either antibody tested or the rapid test, which is the antigen testing. So they're not confirmed, they're considered probables. Um, and I've only had two antigen positive cases. Um, and then along the lines of what Pam was talking about, working with um, Ted Carroll in the rec program, they're hoping to have some summer programs starting July 6th. Um, he just sent us his plans today. So I reviewed those a little bit. They look pretty good. I have a couple of questions about um, ultimate Frisbee and cornhole and how to sanitize that equipment and not share it. So, but overall, it looks like he has a pretty good plan in place. Um, also, the sports complex up on 3A, I met with them. Um, and they're just concerned that, you know, for three hours, kids just kicking a ball around doing practices and drills that they're going to get really bored. And so they're actually going to wait until phase three and see if they can play games. Um, and what else? Working with Elder Affairs, they'd like to get their medical van up and running again. Just ironing out how that is going to work. Their drivers are all over 65, so that puts them in a high-risk category, um, and whether they need to assist people on and off the van, some people do need help with that, so how would that work? Um, what else do I have? I think those are pretty much the highlights of um, the CTC, the Contract Tracing Collaborative, is starting to wind down a little bit. 
at this point. Um, I've only sent two cases to them um, and it's okay, but the communication isn't as strong as I would like it. So um, we'll see what happens as we go forward and cases start to pop up again. The school nurses are done for the year. Um, however, a couple of them did say that if things start to heat up, that they're available to do, you know, put the quarantine and monitor people. So, um, basically I think that's all I have. Okay, good. Thank you. You think this, uh, you think this, the tracking collaborative is going to work out well? Um, I would like to think it's going to work out well. I really want it to work out because. If it works well, then I can just send cases on Saturday and Sunday. But up until now, I haven't done that. So it's really seven days a week that, you know, you have to check your cases. And if something comes up, you have to, you have to go to work. So I would love it if I could just take the weekend off, but um, for my own selfish reasons. But right. the, pro the issue is, is that I use Maven which is the electronic reporting system that the state uses and local public health uses. The contract tracing collaborative uses a different um, electronic system. So the communication just isn't there. Um, all you see is like the case is in progress, but you don't get like daily, you know, signs and symptoms. How are they doing? Um, and then at the end, they just do, you know, um, isolation complete. And that means the case is recovered. It's just a, it's been a little quirky working with it, but I, I would I would hope it would I hope it works because I I'm worried about the fall. Interesting. There was an article in the New York Times uh, yesterday, the day before, that New York has a a uh, tracing collaborative and it hasn't worked real well. They're only been able to identify. About thirty-five percent of the contacts. So they have. I know. I saw. I, I saw that, and um, yeah, that's interesting. So, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I know Charlie Baker really wants it to work. He's a real big proponent of it. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Anybody You're welcome. Else? Nope. Michael, you're clean shaven. I just didn't know who that was, actually. Yeah, I decided that uh, I decided I needed to take a couple years off. <laughs> hey, Robin, good luck in the election. Yes. Uh, OK, well, I, I, I'll vote for myself, and that'll get me over, <laughs> over the top, right? Right. Okay, well, thank you all for participating tonight, and we'll speak to you again. But do you want to like actually close well. the meeting? Please. I would like to move to adjourn. It's my favorite thing. I'll second that. Great. All in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. Harry. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye